pair of AL clubs. It's the Seattle Mariners against the Chicago White Sox. 2K Sports presents MLB 2K10. Just moments from now, it'll be Jake Peavy. His fantastic stuff will be out there on the mound. And hi again, we welcome you to our Saturday night broadcast of Major League Baseball here on 2K Sports. Cellular Field in Chicago, the White Sox looking for a little home magic. Steve, what's he going to use? What's up in his mind today against this Seattle lineup? As a man, if you send Jake Peavy out there, you know you're sending out a bulldog, a guy who wants to finish what he starts. He's so aggressive on the mound. He goes right at the hitters, pounding that strike zone with quality stuff, trying to put him away. Brought to you by Pepsi. Here's the offense from Don Wakamatsu. And our scouting report, John, who are we watching for today? Well, you have to game plan against a guy like Sean Figgins, and not for the fact that he can take you out of the ballpark and change the game with one. The White Sox won last night. They took game one of the three-game series against the Mariners. Number eight, Sean Figgins. Checks his swing. They're going to call it a strike. We'll appeal this one down to third. Just a bit too aggressive. That strike's going to hold up. At the belt, Peavy kicks and throws. And it's 0-2. Figgins, you'll be careful here to make contact. So that last outing, a dramatic finish. 12 innings to get a W. But if you're going to make your home fans stay for extra innings, you might as well win it, and that's what they did. Swing and a miss, strike three on Sean Figgins, and that'll be the end of that advance. Well, a textbook way of pitching. Three pitches, three strikes. Outstanding command during that advance. And it's Jose Lopez. A U.S. cellular field is where the Chicago White Sox tend to get the job done, and they did that in 2009. Much better at home than they were on the road. And that one will head all the way to the backstop for a ball. Now the 1 0 pitch. A shot up the middle, and it's caught by Ramirez. Talking about the White Sox at home, it's a little disconcerting, I would think, that even though they had a plus five at home, they actually were outscored in their own home ball. Well, a lot of that has to do with the fact that they're not a very good defensive team. They're not a very athletic team. Swings, lines this one back up the middle. Beckham. Oh, He'll God. throw on to first, and that'll do it for this half inning. Three up, three down for Jake Beebe. He gets through the first inning without allowing a hit. And the White Sox. First It'll be Ian Snell Chicago doing the Sox. pitching. He'll be starting this one off for Seattle. And he gets going against these White Sox hitters. What do you think's in store? Well, as you get a chance to watch Ian Snell pitch in this one, one of the keys is going to be his ability to change the hitter's eye level. Sometimes he stays up in the zone too much. He has to move his pitches around and get the hitters to adjust now as they look at the pitch coming the into the plate. Line up for the White Sox. Let's take a look. It is courtesy of Pepsi. Scouting pick, John, who are we uh, looking at today? Well, you take a look at Alexi Ramirez. He's one of the more exciting players in baseball. Finally got moved to his more natural position shortstop. And I tell you what, this is a guy that can excite you in a lot of ways. He can hit for power. He can hit for average. And he's not a big guy, but I tell you what, he can generate some power in that frame. Snell sets and throws. And it's 0-2. Alexei Ramirez going to have to protect now. Well, that's a pretty good pitch right there. He got that slider in the strike zone. He got the hitter out in front to swing early. And now, uh, pitcher makes a nice play at first base. That was a nice play. Saw the opportunity at first. Didn't waste any time getting over. That's the key. Beat the runner to the back. Good hustle off the mound. And here's Paul Canerco well, leading the league in home runs. This is swung on, lifted to deep right field. That one, a one hopper off the wall. Canerco's going for it. Just a solid offensive player, day in and day out. The guy that uh, really can deliver for this offense. Carlos Fuentes. 
get to take a look at one here that probably should have ended at first base. Well, he had the burners on coming out of the batter's box and rounding first base. Great aggressiveness on his part. He didn't let up, and he gets in safely. No indecision when he got the first base. That's how you get in safely to second. And it's Carlos Quinton in the box now. Average for him last year, 226 against the Mariners. And that'll retire the side. Caught by Wilson. And heading... And it's Ken Griffey Jr. in the box now. He's going to get us started. Second inning. Ken Griffey Jr. Hit sharply down the line. And that's the first hit for the Mariners in the game. And that'll bring up Franklin Gutierrez. And there's going to be more tomorrow afternoon. It'll be Alex Rodriguez. And the New York Yankees, they find themselves at Angel Stadium of Anaheim to face the Angels. going to be a live broadcast starting at 3.30 Eastern. Hey, Gary, do you think John will buy us dinner in town that time we go watch that ball game? A runner on first, no outs. Ball. Just missed with the fastball, 1-0. At the belt, the 1-0. Oh, no bend on that bender, and it's 2-0. Now, Gary, this is a breaking ball down and away, and it just runs off the plate for a ball this time. Here's the pitch. Oh, and three. that's a ball, 3-0. Franklin Gutierrez at the plate now. We'll see whether or not he's going to swing away here. Uh, he's coming off a game last night where he had two big hits, and looks like he's starting to get locked in a little bit. Swings, hits this one in the air, down the right field line. And that gets down. Gutierrez with a single. Seattle, here's their shot right now. Now this one's coming to the inside part of the plate, but he manages to put the bat on the ball and drive it to right field. We call that a muscle hit, Steve. He just muscled that to the opposite field. Now how do you know it's a muscle hit? Muscles? Take a look at these. Oh, guns. That one swung on its line. One away now. And that keeps the runners at first and second. Now a look at the standings in the Western Division as we get through the first month of the season. It's brought to you by State Farm. First place, the Angels. Mariners in second place. Rangers in the third spot. And in the fourth spot, the A's. It'll be Cart batting. Three for eight lifetime record against the White Sox. Swung and a ground ball to third. Safe at first base. They got a base runner. This is a great situation for some offense. But when you're setting your defense, you don't set your defense for guys not to hit the ball well. This ball wasn't hit hard, but he gets down the line so quickly he's able to beat it out for that base hit. Two away. And Griffey Jr. comes in. Well, we've got a moment to look back to last year's Chicago White Sox and see how they rank. Sixth in home runs, sixth in stolen bases, and they were in the top ten in team batting average with runners in scoring position, getting a lot of clutch base hits, and that's a great stat for a team that wants to win ball games. Here's the 0-1 from Peavy, and that swung on and hit. Rios gets another one down. That'll score a run. Tagged it home, and he is out of there. And so the scoring came in the second. Second inning sees the first two runs of our ball game. The Mariners lead two to nothing. And Beckham's in the box. He'll start the home half of the second. Number 15, Gordon Beckham. Swings a little early that time, 0-1. Well, anytime you recognize a slider, you got to be very patient with it. You can't be over anxious. You got to stay back. And then when you see it good enough, let it fly. Snell sets and throws. Fastball swung out and missed. Struck him out. One away. Here's the four seam fastball coming at you in KCAM. Get a better look. First pitch, curveball, swung out and missed, 0-1. Oh 
third career at bat. So one for two against Ian Snell. Mm -mm. Helped him out there. 0 2. Let two seam fastball down and away. It's awfully tough to center that ball and make solid contact. That time he couldn't even make any contact. Able to set him down there. Chalk that one up as a strikeout. That's how you use your fastball, using it very effectively. Two consecutive punch outs. It's going to be Przinski, one of the best batting averages in the league. Towards center field. And the sides retired. Gutierrez, the catch, off the field he comes. It goes quickly for Ian Snell. One, two, three. Quick glimpse there. Don Wakamatsu looking. And he has to be happy with the work on the mound, especially that last inning. Insurance run so important. Fresh count. Figgins. Here it comes. Swung on and fouled away. And that's a ball. He'd be too far outside with it. He tried to backdoor that pitch, but left it out and away. Line towards second. Beckham. So Figgins is retired. And it's Jose Lopez. First one to Lopez. Here's the pitch. Ball. Slider misses badly with it. 1 and 0. A big part of the offense in last night's game with four hits. They'd love to see it again today. 1 0 on the way. 1 0 pitch. That's the cutter in there. 1 1. When you can hit your spot with that kind of movement down and into the hitter, you're way ahead of the game. 1 1 pitch. Oh, that is hit well off the bat of Lopez. Rios will field. And he gets over to take care of it. Well, this ball is hit into the left center field gap. And the center fielder has priority over the left fielder. Good job taking charge. He called him off and made the play. At the belt, Peavy kicks and throws. There's a swing and a miss behind 0 1. Milton Bradley not fooled by that one. That'll even up the count. He's averaged 297 lifetime off the White Sox. Boy, excellent movement to the cutter, and it's one and two. Hitting such a mental part of the game and coming off last night when he had three hits, he's got to be feeling good. The one-two pitch. Milton Bradley swinging through it, and he's gone. And they are retired in short order. Good defensive half inning. Seattle two, the White Sox nothing. And here's Mark Tian leading it off. He's got one of the best averages in the American League. Mark Tian. Snell gets him to swing and a miss for a strike. Well, one of the offensive leaders in the game this year, and obviously a guy who's getting the job done for this offense, and somebody they've really come to rely upon. And that'll set down Tian. Here's how the Central Division race is shaping up in late April, courtesy of State Farm. It's the White Sox in first, Twins in the second spot, third, the Royals. In the fourth spot, it's the Indians. And rounding out the list, the Tigers. Not a lot of expectations in Chicago this year, but the White Sox surprising everybody, sitting atop of the American League Central right now and, and building that confidence level. And here's Mark Kotze. Hit hard on the ground to short. And Kotze retired. It's a nice throw by the shortstop. The key to that is having good feet. When an infielder makes bad throws, it's not because of his arm, it's because of his feet. Now the first pitch. Hard grounded to short. Picked up by Wilson. Throws to first side is retired. Well, how about that? And if you're just joining in, Gary Thorne with Steve Phillips and John Crock bringing you Major League Baseball here on 2K Sports. On the ground to second. Beckham. So Griffey Jr. is retired. Gutierrez at the plate. We talk about a guy who came in and made a pitching staff better with just his sheer presence in center field. Franklin Gutierrez did that for his team. 
Called strike, and Phoebe's got him on one. Gutierrez with a complete season under his belt now. We'll try and get to that 20 home run, 100 RBI mark in a new season. But I don't see why he can't do it. He made great strides offensively in 2009. When he was with Cleveland, you didn't know if he would ever hit, but it seems like he's figured it out. And if he has, 20 homers and 100 RBIs well within his range. Here it comes. And Franklin Gutierrez strikes out. Couldn't make contact on that one. KKM presents the two seamer. Take a look. With two strikes, the hitter wanted the fastball. He got it, but didn't do anything with it. And it's Casey Kochman now. He's got the best average in the division. Here's the pitch to Kochman. Called strike, and Phoebe's got him on one. Well, he's getting the job done this year, no question about it. Such production, so consistent. Hit in the air to left center. And there's the third up. Seven pitches and it's done. That's how you save your arm and go deep into a game. And it'll be the White Sox. Okay. Hope you have your mittens on. It is cold. Uh, tune in on the radio to our broadcast. Getting colder here as it gets later. And it's Alexei Ramirez now to lead it off. He's number one in runs scored in the league. And Ramirez settles in, first pitch. Swings and misses at the fastball, 0-1. Uh, Gary, he, he can really swing the bat. Just a quality approach at the plate, day in and day out. That consistency is critical to their success. To That's one away. Upcoming, the schedule for the Seattle Mariners. One game left for the White Sox. That's tomorrow. They'll continue their road trip for the next series, the Royals at Kauffman Stadium. That'll be a three-game series. After that, it's about defending home field. They go against the Rangers and their hitting star, Michael Young. That's a team they handled all right the last time up. They'll try for a repeat performance. And here's Paul Canerco. Well, the thing about Paul Canerco now at this stage in his... Liner between first and second. And he steps on first. That's the second out. Right fielder. Number And Quinton settles in. Leading the MLB in batting average. And here's the first one. Here's a swing and a fly ball to right center. That gets down. That'll put him on the tying run up. Now breaking down Carlos Quentin's season so far. Let's see how he stacks up compared to everybody else. First in batting average. First in batting average with runners in scoring position. He's also a hit machine leading the league in hits right now. Swinging the bat well. Every time he puts it in play, he seems to find a hole. That's going to bring Gordon Beckham up. Such a consistent, productive, professional hitter. You know, one of their best bats in the lineup, Gary. First pitch to him. It's strike one. Can't make contact on the fastball. Well, they've got a couple hits here, and we're into the fourth inning, so they maybe they're starting to get something going. And the second time through the lineup, maybe they'll try to figure something out, Gary. And the side's retired. Gutierrez the catch. Off the field he goes. So Ian Snell gets it done. Another good inning. He has delivered. It'll be Carp batting. Designated hitter, number 59, Mike Carp. At the belt, Peavy kicks and throws. First pitch is a cutter. Looked at 0 and 1. Oh one 1, fastball and a called strike. Well, Gary, that's a great four-seam fastball, but when you lay it down the heart of the plate, you know you're at risk for the ball getting tattooed. Unfortunately, the hitter didn't swing. That one is hit well. Quentin's there. One down. Let's take a look at the American League rankings from last season and check out what the Seattle Mariners did. Eighth in stolen bases, 11th in home runs, and the slugging numbers, well, they just didn't quite have the slugging numbers that they would have liked. Power, not a big part of their game. They were a base-to-base -base team having to manufacture runs. That swung on and flied to right. So Wilson is set down. That's two gone. And Bard's in the box. 
I looked locked in last night the way he swung the bat. Good stroke, good contact. See if he can't get it going again today to add those two hits from yesterday. Oh, Call one. strike, and Phoebe's got him on one. Unless you stay back and really think about going the other way, you've got no chance of hitting that four-seamer down and away. Hit sharply towards the hole, and there's Tian for the third out. Not a lot of action in this half inning, nothing on. And if you are just coming on board, Gary Thorne, Steve Phillips, John Crock, as we bring you Major League Baseball here on 2K Sports. And Alex Cerritos to lead off in the top ten in hits. And he starts Rios out. A line drive towards the hole. And it is in there. That's going to bring the tying run to the plate. That's going to bring up A.J. Krasinski. Uh, one thing they know they can count on in this lineup is his bat. He has been so consistently good. He's in the top echelon of hits right now. No one out and a runner on first. First pitch. Here it comes. Hit hard on the ground to short. Too late and he is safe at second. And he gets there in time, second base. And that'll bring Mark T into the plate. He's having some kind of offensive season, Garrett, really in the middle of everything this team's doing offensively. Takes a swing at that fastball, can't connect on one. Facing each other just a couple of times last year, 0 for 2 against Snell. And that's a strike. Mark Tian's going to have to take very close approach on the next one. But just an impossible pitch. Line shot into center field. And that is in there, the go ahead run on board. And Rios comes in. And the White Sox, they just keep rolling. A productive hit right there. See the impact on our Pepsi WPA graph. With one run already across the board and nobody out. This has the potential of being a really big inning. Let's see if they can string some hits together. First pitch on the way. Swing and a miss on that curveball. It's 0 1. Snell sets and throws. This one's pretty well hit to deep left center. Bradley's there. One down. And the runners will have to hold at first and second. Stepping up to the plate for the Chicago White Sox. And for Sednick's batting, grounded out last time. One out with runners at first and second. And the first pitch. Swing and a hot shot. And that's through a base hit. Tremendous situation now for the White Sox. Uh, continuing this onslaught offensively, that base hit now loads the bases. All kinds of pressure on the hitter. Let's see what he does. And uh, in the batter's box, it's Ramirez. And this is what they've been working for in this ball game. Golden opportunity here. Base hit. We've got a whole new game. Back up the middle. And so he comes home. That ties the ball game. Boy, this lineup, they are hot right now. The chances, they are productive. Number 14, Paul Pinerto. They tried to go down with that 0-1 pitch, but it gets blasted right back for the base hit. But the way he went after that in the box, Steve, it looked like he might have been guessing down there. Well, I'll tell you what, you have to make contact behind in the count. He got a pitch over the heart of the plate and he took advantage of it. There's contact. He drove it well. This one's off the wall. He throws. That first run is in. He scores. He beats them to the plate. Some days you're hot, and some days you're even hotter. Right now, they are red hot. Number 20. Pepsi brings us a look at the win expectation change for those two RBIs. Uh, now he's surrendered three straight hits. He's got to bounce back and get this guy. He needs an out. 
RBI opportunity right here for Carlos Quinton. Steve, I think from a manager's perspective, he's got to be all swing and a line drive. That one falls. That should bring Ramirez home. Ramirez around third, headed for the plate. And Ramirez is home. Boy, this lineup, you just see opportunities here, and this offensive lineup knows what to do with them. kind of lean in Steve and slap that thing the other way in that kind of pitch. Well that you can't pull that pitch if you do it's going to be a ground ball to short you want to punch it to right field. He's one of the best at doing it. And Beckham's in the box. Steve there is a swing and a liner. Out at the plate and he's going to hang on to it no relay so they will not get the double play. Quick hands by the second baseman. That transfer from the glove to the throwing hand from the accurate throw, able to cut him down at the plate. And he starts Rios out. Catcher can't control it. On, oh, he's going to try for second. Snell sets and throws. Hit up the middle. Gets another one down. That'll score a run. Stepping up to the plate. Uh, oh, one mistake right here. He throws it over the heart of the plate. He pays for it. AJ Brzezinski. Reed will be the new pitcher. They've decided it was time to make a change here. Well, today started not overly sharp. Didn't have his best stuff. Kept his team close, but now it's going to come down to the late innings of the game, and can the bullpen get the job done? Hot shot towards the hole. Throws on to first in time to retire the side. So they come back to take the lead in a big, big inning. The White Sox leading now. They've got the momentum. A look at the manager, Ozzie Guillen. All right now his lineup is in overdrive. Uh, exciting bit of run production. A good way to keep your manager happy. And it's Sean Figgins leading off. He's the top ten in stolen bases for the league. Sliders in there. No balls and a strike. The guy that gets them going offensively. He can move on the bases and seems to find a way to get scoring position. Strike two. Peavy dominating in this A.B. He's got some pitches to play with. Oh, man, look at that. That's a Major League Baseball player swinging like that. Yeah. Big swing and a miss on a heater. Strike him out one down. That's a pretty fast pitch right there. and Hard to get that much break on it. A real risky pitch right there, and he comes out of it alive. That one's right down the middle of the plate, and the batter just swung through it. Mm, John, he's lucky he didn't get tattooed on that. Well, you're absolutely right. The only player who wants that last pitch back more than the pitcher is the hitter. And it's Jose Lopez. Leads the division in hits. Strike one, P. He evens the count. Well, that cut fastball away. It looks like it's coming down the heart of the plate. Runs to the outside corner. It tends to turn into a pop-up. Swings and hits this one. Going to be fielded by Rios. The catch is made. Here's what the White Sox schedule looks like. They finish up the Seattle series tomorrow. Then they'll have to contend with Michael Young and the rest of that lineup for Texas. A team that will definitely give them a competitive series. That'll get underway on Thursday night. Following that, they'll have a road series to play the Yankees and their premier star, Derek Jeter, who lead their division as well. So they'll be out and about over a good bit of that upcoming schedule. And Milton Bradley to bat. Now he gets walked a lot. The American League has him in the top five. Peavy misses. He's out of the zone down low. Base runners are what you want. It's on base percentage. Get on and see what happens. And this guy's so patient, he finds different ways to get on, and he'll take a walk. Line drive. And they will tag him out, and the side is retired. Save your arm. Do it by pitching only eight times in one inning. Three.
And here's Mike Tian leading it off. Uh, coming off a good ball game last night, Number picking up two five, hits in that one. Mark Tian. Here's the pitch. Line drive. And that'll set down Tian. Number three. It's Mark Kotze in the box now. Career number is a 317 average off Seattle. Here's the first pitch to Kotze. That's a foul ball. Swing and a drive, deep left center. Gutierrez. And he meanders over to put it away. And for Sednik's batting. Trying to get here, just one for three thus far. Now Bard positions himself. And in there, second hit for him in the ball game in his fourth plate appearance. So that brings Alexei Ramirez up. Well, you would have to think with the Number speed 10, that's on first base right Alexei now that they'll put him in motion Ramirez. to try to make things happen here in this game. A runner on first with two outs. And Ramirez settles in first pitch. And they pitch out. Uh, nobody's moving. Can't catch up with that swing and a miss, and it's now 0-2. Slider called strike three. Side is retired. Well, that was a quick inning right there. Seven pitches. And the Mariners coming up next. Here's a look at Don Wakamatsu. And some good pitching last inning. He now hopes to get the necessary offense going, get him going in the right direction. Here's the pitch to Griffey Jr., now here's a grounder towards the hole. Beckham. One away. Well, it's now a Baker's dozen. 13 in a row he sat down. Absolutely lights out. What a performance. At the belt, Peavy kicks and throws. And Tian with the catch. And Casey Kochman's bat. He flew out his last time up. Here's the pitch to Kochman. Nope, that one not in there. PV missing. Well, it's getting late right now. Two outs here in the seventh inning, and you know they're down by a bunch of runs. They need to start to get something going right here, Gary. A swing and a fly ball to left center field. And the sides retired as they head into the dugout. And they're unable to make any noise here in this half inning. The White Sox still ahead. Things will start. And Paul Kodarko to lead it off. He had a two-run single in his last appearance. Well, big production in this ball game. Already driving in a couple runs. and A major factor in this offense. And he starts Kodarko out. He swings and nails a liner. And it is going to be a foul ball. Strike two, no balls and two strikes. Conerco now will look to tighten up that zone. The pitcher's got him right. Lined right at the second baseman. One away. Carlos Quinton. Now there's one down. First pitch to Quinton. Swings and misses the slider. 0-1. Here's the pitch. Strike two. Now with no balls, two strikes. Quinton needs to protect that strike zone. A smash to first. And he steps on first. That's the second out. And Beckham's in the box. Bounced into a fielder's choice his last time. Slider swung on and missed. 0 oh and 1. Well, right there, you can just tell that the hitter was absolutely... Swing and a long, high drive deep into right center field. Gone! A home run! Add one more to that lead. Solo, big fly ball up by five.
It'll be interesting to talk to him after the game and find out whether that was the wrong pitch or the wrong location of that four seam fastball. Either way, he gave up a home run. White Sox lead expanding here. Gary, they just keep getting big hits. Center fielder. Number 51. Two outs and nobody on. Alex Rios. And he starts Rios out. That's hit foul by Rios. That's a strike and it's 0 2. Time for Rios now to protect. And Steve, uh, this is the point in the ball game where you are really. Swing sits this one pretty well. Deep right center. And it's up against the wall. And he ends up at second. That's a double. Well, he's having a heck of a day so far. Just third hit of the game in this one. They just can't seem to find an answer for him. Chance to drive it around A.J. Pierzynski. Swung on, line to right field. Streak continues. That gets in. Boy, what a time now to capitalize if they can. Well, now after giving up three straight hits, the manager has to start thinking about getting somebody up in the pen. And the batter's box, it's Tian. Drove in a run earlier in the game. There's a ball hit very high in the air, deep to left field. Goodbye, home run good for three. With that three-run homer, they just extended their lead. Well, another home run right there. That's two now. So really, this, this lineup looking like they're getting very comfortable. They have not figured out a way how to shut down this White Sox offense today. They look so good. Number 30. Two outs, space is empty. Here's the first pitch to Kotze. He makes contact, line drive. There's the throw. In time for the out. But not before they tally four times, thanks to two home runs in the inning. White Sox continue to run away with this ball game. We got the bottom three in the lineup due up. It'll be Carp batting. One for two in the ball game. Here's the first pitch. Ball. Ugly pitch. Catcher able to somehow scoop that out. At the belt, Peavy kicks and throws. Swung on, grounded towards the hole. Over to Canerco. That's one away. It's going to be Wilson now. Last time up, flew out. The first pitch. Strike Called ball. strike. And Phoebe's got him on one. Look, Gary, with one out right here, they still have time in this inning to try to generate some runs. They need to score here in this eighth inning and not leave it all to the ninth. Up the middle. Back up. So Wilson is set down. Uh, Gary, he just keeps stretching this hitless streak even further. And we're talking about 17 hitters retired in a row. First pitch. Fastball swung on a miss, 0 and 1. Uh, Gary, I think right now that uh, you've got to consider trading outs for runs if, if you're pitching. I mean, listen, uh, just keep getting outs right now. You have the countdowns there. You only need four outs left to win this ball game. Strike two. PB dominating in this AB. He's got some pitches to play with. Boy, that good late movement down, that cut fastball, unbelievable action on that pitch. Fastball swung on and missed. Side retired. No runs, no hits. Nobody crossed the plate in this half inning, and nobody left on base. The White Sox still ahead. Oh. 
And Pesednik's batting. Left fielder. You know, Number Gary, I think you're losing a little something here. I don't think this guy's nearly as solid defensively as the one he's replacing. So interesting move. Towards center field. And he makes the catch. One away. Number 10. And it's Alexei Ramirez now. One away. Called out on strikes in his last appearance. And Ramirez settles in. First pitch to right center. And that's a base hit. Ramirez on board with a single. And that'll bring up Paul Canerica. Well, Alexi Ramirez's season so far. Let's take a look at where he ranks compared to everybody else. Fourth in hits. Sixth in doubles. And as you can see, that ability to make contact is there. Hitting for a very high average. Ranked among the top ten hitters in the league. One out, runner on at first. And he starts Canerco out. Well hit towards the middle. And there's one. And there's two, a double play. Well, that's one way to keep your pitch count down. They wrap that inning up with three pitches. The White Sox, 10. Mariners, 2. Quick glimpse of the manager, Ozzie Guillen. Great game his club has put together. Things have gone really well. And we'll get to see Bobby Jenks pitching. They've decided it's time to bring a new arm into this one. Well, this was an outstanding performance today. I mean, that's good starting pitching right there. He won't be able to finish what he started, but he pitched a heck of a ball game. Fresh count, Figgins, here it comes. Back up. One away. Uh, just having some difficulty right now trying to make up this ground. And, and obviously they've got a hill still to climb. And running out of time right now, only two outs remaining. So they've got to get something going and keep it going. And we've got Kearns batting. Fielded by Ramirez. That retires Kearns. And here's Milton Bradley. Last season uh, did not have any hits. One at bat off Bobby Jenks. Jenks with a delivery. Back up. And on to first for out number three. And that's going to do it. Well, it went a great one here today, Gary. And it's all because of the pitching. Outstanding pitching really leading them to victory. Well, time to bestow that Pepsi Clutch Performance Award. Paul Canerco. Canerco just made all the difference. You know, a lot of times you get a multi-hit game, you think you had a great day, but it's when you get those two hits that absolutely matter. And this guy got him when his team needed him the most. Getting on base, setting the table, scoring runs. That's why he's our Pepsi Clutch performer. Steve, it seemed like they knew from the get-go they had it. This was going to be their day, and they were right. Now, you and I like the close games just because there's a little more intrigue for all nine innings, but the hometown fans, they like the offensive explosion and the big win. I guess it's that time again. We wrap up this 2K Sports broadcast of MLB. For John, Steve, our entire 2K Sports crew, I'm Gary Thorne. Adieu, adieu.